Hey guys, hope you're all doing okay. This is Rogue Hat and this is a dead laptop that the original owner was gonna throw in the trash. And I think rightfully so because it is more than two decades old. But I wanted to see if I can have a practical use case for this. So it all went down like this. I saw an ad on Facebook Marketplace that said very old laptop, $50. There was no picture, no model number, nothing, not even description. Not knowing anything about this, I decided to save it in my saved items on Facebook. Three weeks had passed and the listing was still up. I messaged the owner and he said, yeah, it's still available. I was just gonna throw it in the trash because no one was interested in buying it. Upon inquiring about the device, he said, oh, it just says IBM. I offered him $10, which is better than, you know, throwing it in the trash. And I went over to his house. He handed me the bag and said, do you wanna check? I said, no, because I liked my odds and I wasn't gonna turn it down no matter what the condition was. So let's see what we've got. We've got the original IBM ThinkPad bag, which is very rare to find these days. We've got the data transfer cable and we've got a CD about a film that I haven't never seen before actually. I also got the laptop itself and the charger. The charger is also the original charger with modified adapter. Stupidly, I assume that it's just gonna work and I'm gonna have a great time using it, you know, retro style. When I opened up the laptop, it was absolutely full bar, like you couldn't do anything. The casing was broken from several places. The screen looked like it was thrown into a pool full of acid. The machine was basically melting into my hands. I didn't like my odds. I plugged in the charger, pressed the power button and waited and nothing, nothing happened. It really seemed like that this old timer was really dead. I decided to open her up when unscrewing the screws, I noticed something peculiar. The back panel basically melted into my hand and it came off permanently and just broke into two parts. Man, things were looking rough. I took out most of the components, gave them some cleaning, plugged it in and still nothing. I was about to give up then I noticed something peculiar. The battery was still plugged in. I unplugged the battery and just disconnected all the connectors um, and disabled them and it turned on. I was so happy at this point when I saw that it, it had gotten to the point of bias and um, then all that happiness turned into sadness, unfortunately. I sat there as I saw that the laptop was stuck on BIOS forever. I tried powering it off and on several times, but nothing. I decided to open up the laptop once again. And I think it was the faulty hard drive connector. I fixed that, put it in the slot and got past BIOS. I was so happy again. I went into the BIOS and it had detected every single device connected to it. After booting it, it said enter password and this was going to be the toughest one so far. I asked the original owner what the password was but they didn't know and he just sent me a random password and he said try this password. So unsurprisingly, that didn't work at all. It seemed like the hard drive was locked and it wasn't just any lock, it was an IBM system lock. I knew what I had to do, I just had to break its encryption. Um, again, still being naive. <laughs> I did some research and it turned out IBM in their infinite wisdom used to lock systems permanently. Back in the 1990s and 2000s, these machines were mostly used by corporate and businesses. You know what, uh, what IBM did when any of their clients forgot the system password on their hard drive? They replaced the hard drive? No, they replaced the cell. No, they reflashed the bias. Not even close. They freaking replaced the whole motherboard when the client didn't know the password, the supervisor password or the password to the hard drive. Do you realize how insane and overkill that is? So I tried brute forcing and dictionary methods and I couldn't break the password. And then it hit me. I just have to disconnect the hard drive and attach it to my computer using a USB. And fortunately, I had one of these lying around. These are the IDE to USB connectors. You can connect it to a 2.5 IDE drive or a 3.5 IDE hard drive with an external power adapter, but plugging in the USB. I plugged it in and nothing. The drive wasn't showing up in Windows Explorer. I went into disk management, the drive was there thankfully. My idea was to format it and it should get rid of the password. I couldn't format it as it always gave me an error. It's been a while since I 
was impressed with the security mechanism that proved. So I downloaded some external tools and even some hardware level tools to, to format or break the encryption by plugging it in as an external drive. I couldn't. My last resort was to boot up Linux or Mac OS X because they have a different file structure and different format. Again, no luck. I haven't been able to break that lock. There are some other overpowered methods that I haven't tried because they're so time consuming. So it seemed like that was it, you know? I tried plugging in the hard drive back into the laptop, but as luck or lack thereof would have it, I broke the slot, I broke one of the pins and it just popped out. <laughs> so I was basically stuck at this point. I had an 80 gig drive ID drive really old from like eight, nine years ago lying around, but without no connector, I couldn't do anything. I ordered a new connector on eBay and waited for two weeks and it, then it came after two weeks. I formatted my new hard drive as FAT32, plugged it back in the laptop and still nothing. And I think it was because of the fact that the previous hard drive was 10 gigs and this one was 80 gigs, so maybe it was over capacity. That's, at least that's my estimation. I only had one option. If I'm ever gonna use this laptop, I have to install Linux or some live installation medium so that I can at least boot into it. But it was trickier than it sounds. There is a USB connector on the device, but it didn't recognize any USB 2.0 or even USB 1.0 flash drives. I had some CDR lying around and I decided to burn the damn small Linux onto it. The problem was my version of Rufus didn't support the CD DVD medium bootables. So I used the Windows default one. I popped in the CD and nothing. It still wanted me to plug in the hard drive even after switching the boot order. <sighs> Sometimes you can't just win, you know, but I wasn't ready to give up yet. I took out the CD and made some modification to its disk sector, put the CD back and I was using a two decades old, messed up, beaten up, dead corpse of a laptop. Everything worked perfectly. I then decided to hook up the VGA cable with this one and it works flawlessly on my monitor. Seems like this old timer isn't done just yet. So if you're patient and consistent, you can resurrect stuff. Oh, don't quote me on that. <laughs> Anyways, all jokes aside, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys later.